there's a voice that keeps on calling me down the road. That's where I'll always be. Every stop I make, I make a new friend. Can't stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again. Maybe tomorrow I'll want to settle down. Until tomorrow, I'll just keep moving on. So if you want to join me for a while, just grab your hat, we'll travel like that's old style. Maybe tomorrow, I'll want to settle down. Until tomorrow, I'll just keep moving on. Trish Kellerman, and I'm here with young Scott Cowan, who miraculously escaped serious injury when he fell 15 feet through to the basement level of a construction site here this morning. The surprising twist to the story is that the boy was helped out of the pit, believe it or not, by a dog. Can you come in tight here, Tommy? Get me closer. So you were pretty lucky, weren't you, Scott? Yeah, I'm okay. I hurt my ankle ball. And you say it was a dog who found you, is that right? Yeah. Where is he? There he is. He did it. He got me out. And what did he do? He rescued me. Gee, thanks, boy. And whose dog is he? Is he yours? Nope, I never seen him before. This is the site foreman, Vic Mallory, the first person on the scene this morning and the first to see the dog in action. So as I understand it, Vic, the dog brought the boy a rope? No, 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 it, it wasn't rope. Uh, he lowered the boy a cable, uh, got hold of a, a coil, and I, I guess he uh, he must have unwound it, because we always leave it rolled up, eh? He unwound it. Now, how would he have done that? Well, I, I wasn't here, eh? But as I drove up uh, on the lot, I, I seen them. Uh, the dog had the cable down to the boy who was uh, pulling himself up out of the hole. But from what the kid said... The dog did it all himself. Well, yeah. I mean, um, how do you know uh, the rope, the, the roll was heavy enough uh, that the kid wouldn't pull it in on top of him? Uh, how do you know uh, uh, th th what cable is, even? I mean, come to that, how do you know the kid was there? Well, that's why we're here, Mr. Mallory, to try to find out. Uh, where's the dog now? He's there by the car. And what's he doing? Telling you you got a flat. That's construction sites for you, eh? <laughs> No, no, stay on the dog, stay on. This is Trish Kellerman for 3D. Richard Kellerman, August 7th. Notes on slides from Russ Sherman on cryptozoological expedition to Cameroons. Subject, Mokli Mbembe, possible mini brontosaurus. Slide one. Ah, from this angle, we can clearly see very little. This pygmy vestige of the Jurassic age retains all the characteristics of a bush with legs. Come on, Sherman, I hope you got better than this. Slide three. Ah, here we can dimly discern what could be the periscope head. That's out of focus. Now it looks like an anthill. Three weeks he stalked the beast, and you should see what he sent out. I could have done better with a brownie. Slides from Sherman arrived okay? No, I can't understand it unless the film went through the x-ray machine at the airport. Come and look at these. Sorry, love, can't. I've got a deadline. But you got your brontosaurus? No, that's what I'm telling you. The slides are useless. And this time we're so close. There have been a dozen sightings throughout the Congo Basin. There is a living dinosaur out there, and I'm going to be the first to document it. Do you realize I haven't had a lead like this for two years? Nothing solid since the giant tube worms on the Bay of Fundy. Richard, are you really going to Africa? Don't concern yourself. You've got a deadline. Ah, I've got more than a deadline. I've got a feature segment for Sunday night. What on? Dogs? Yes, dogs. But as heroes, friends to man. Good. Sounds like something you can really get your gums into. Oh, sure. <laughs> Laugh. But I saw the most amazing dog today. All our Canadian Airlines ticket agents are occupied at the moment. Please do not hang up. Your call will be answered as soon as one of the agents is free. This message will not be repeated. Please hold the line. Cape 
Picard, 1978. Now, that's strange. What is? It's a German Shepherd. The dog today was a German Shepherd. This is Ohio, 1975. Richard, come and look at this. Can't. I'm going to Africa. But this doesn't make any sense. I am not interested in dogs, Trish, only in animals who have yet to be discovered and whose discovery will add to our evolutionary knowledge. Okay, okay, just tell me, in your professional opinion, is this an ordinary dog? Tugging a branch, fetching a stick, that is an ordinary dog. You know, this dog looks an awful lot like the dog that saved the kid at the construction site this morning. Look at that. Hmm. Good trick. It's not a trick. This is footage from our news library. I asked the 3D researcher to see what they had on file for my segment on dog heroes. And see, here's the write-up on the dog I saw this morning. Similar markings. Similar cranial size. Do you believe this? I don't know. I've got two other rescues here. Two different dates, hundreds of miles apart, and the dogs are almost identical. Well, dogs are one of the oldest domesticated species, closely in tune with man and his needs. They often perform amazing feats out of love for their masters. Oh, well, these dogs don't have a master. What? Mm -mm. No known masters, uh, owner unknown, unidentified dog. It's another one. Uh, in a minute, this is your turn to hold on. Where was that? Uh, this is uh, Claremont, Ontario. This is quite recent. What's he supposed to be doing? He's uh, taking a piece of a hot air balloon to a hilltop to guide in a helicopter pilot. Now, is that ordinary? No, not if the animal was acting of his own free will. Not if he genuinely assessed a problem, made a conclusion, and uh, arrived at his own solution. That's a three-part thinking process. That would have to be a very superior canine. But... That's also a very big if. Sir, do you want to make a reservation? No, forget it. Goodbye. Well? Are you sure that there was no human instructing him? Ah, uh, that's the common link. No one knows where any of the dogs came from. A group of dogs with above average intelligence, superior coordination, and exhibiting a primitive form of homo faber. A primitive what? Homo faber, man's ability to reason, to use tools to solve a problem. You know. Wait a minute. I uh, had some data on a dog once. I even started a file. Let's see. Well, you must have kept it. You keep everything. There wasn't much, but this dog does remind me. Let's see now. Bustards extinct. Camels belligerent. Ah, I think this is it. Yes. Canine superior. Let's see. 1963? Yeah, university. A friend of mine, Harvey Comiskey, was going to do his zoology masters on a dog that kept turning up in the area, exhibiting unusual intelligence. And what happened? Well, the dog disappeared. He lost track of him. He ended up doing the paper on a fish with eight legs. Richard, look, it's a German Shepherd. And look, Trish, the same markings. The same undog-like coordination. Determination. What does it mean? It means that there have been unique examples of uncanine behavior around for at least 20 years and that it's an ongoing phenomenon. And look, Trish, the same concern for human safety. It's like reflex. Present one with a dangerous situation and it responds. It can't help itself. Instead of being protective of one human being, its master, it is protective equally of all human life. I could use that on my show. Look at that dog. No, no, Trish, look at them. Pardon? Trisha, if there's this much, there has to be more. If there are six, there have to be 16 or 60. You really think so? It's as if they belong to an improved branch of Canis familiaris, superior to all other German shepherds, similar enough to each other to be classified as a new subspecies all their own, and somehow no one's realized it. Is it possible? Are you willing to help find out? How? Call in favors. You're in the business. You have three tapes. We need 30. What about um, NFB libraries, newspaper files, wildlife archives, uh, the Humane Society, home movies? If these dogs really do exist, then there must be records of them. Let's say we get the footage. What then? What if we get enough data? We can run it through the Apple for analysis and begin to discover what they are, what they do, where they came from. In short, prove to the world that they really do exist. Let's go for it. <laughs> Anything that you have on file over there would be much appreciated. Yeah, particularly if it's visual material. Yeah? Do you ask Michael when he gets in if uh, any of what we've been discussing rings a bell with him? Yeah, you're bearing in mind, you know, that it's, it's quite an extraordinary thing. <laughs>
animals, but not like other animals. Hmm. That sounds like a riddle. It is. What are you going to look at? Exactly that. A superior canine when he's with other animals. That one doesn't seem afraid. They feel comfortable with much larger and stronger creatures than themselves. Do you think that one understands the danger of a wild animal? Or is he just being playful? I don't know. His use of the rope pulley couldn't be accidental. He knows what he's doing, trapping another animal. Definitely superior to other dogs. In every way. This footage was shot by a behavioral scientist in Illinois in 81. He tested the dog with a dangerous situation, left the camera running, and then stood back to see how the dog solved it. And he's not afraid of fire? No. Everything points to a biological breakthrough, an evolutionary leap forward. Think of it. First, 15 million years ago, Canis lupus. Dog evolves. Wild, independent a hunter, enemy to man. Then, 25,000 years ago, Canis familiaris, domesticated. A friend to man, but a slave, dependent on him, working for him, with him, but without a free intelligence. Now, perhaps, perhaps, in the last 20 years, Canis Liberatus, dog free of his dependents, moving at will, still friendly, but with a superior intelligence, one on a par with what? The great apes, certainly chimpanzees. I mean, these may not just be dogs doing unusual things. I may have discovered a whole new race of super canines. We may have discovered. And now all we have to do is to catch one. Well, you said so yourself. There's one in town right now. Catch one? Why do we have to catch one? To study it, to run tests, to determine its IQ. I'm going to write a whole new chapter on animal behavior. No, I've got to get this ready for air on Sunday night. I don't Time for a dog safari. I've got enough, more than enough, for an Emmy-winning show. Trish, this is not a tube worm. This is not a fish with eight legs. This discovery will make my name a household word. Canis Kellerman. Do you want some other cryptozoologist to have the glory? The articles in National Geographic? No, of course not. Well, then say there are hundreds of super canines out there. And it's just a question of time before some other scientist in some other city realizes what it all means. And here we are within a few miles, maybe even blocks all of right, one. All right, all right. What do we have to do? Sit there. We have to work out where is the most logical place for him to be right now after a rescue. Will he return to his family, uh, seek a particular kind of food? Is there a home ground, a preferred habitat? What is the natural habitat of super canine based on all available data? Apparently drawn to wherever humans are. Okay, what about family units? Perhaps there's some kind of organized social structure that... Uh... No known family groups. Okay, how many sightings have been of females and how many of males? Only males sighted. What? No females. <laughs> if there are new species, there have to be females. Or perhaps they're bionic. You've been watching too much television. Or cloned. I mean, look at them. The similarities are incredible. It's as if they all came from the same litter. Maybe they are cloned. They do appear to possess remarkable genetic similarities, but then they are an aberrative strain. That could be one of its characteristics, identical DNA. That's something to determine when we catch one. You're not going to cut one open, are you? Why not? Just to sell our two. Because, Richard, there is another hypothesis. You've got a hypothesis? Yes, and this one fits all the facts. Great. Let's hear it. I want a line map of every known sighting of a super canine in the past 20 years. Is it possible? Is what possible? It's crazy. It's wild. What is? What is the maximum population of super canine in North America based on all available data? 380. 
Just think of it, three. What is the minimum population of super canines based on all available data? One? It can't be. Why not? Identical dogs, all males, never more than one seen at once. Like I said, it fits all the facts. But the same dog can't be everywhere. No. Look at the dates. It is possible for a dog to have gone from here to here in three months, from here to here in two. But what about the black and white footage? There's evidence of the dog being active 20 years ago. You're the zoologist. Couldn't an intellectually and emotionally expanded creature have an expanded life expectancy? It's possible, but not likely. Why just one creature? Biologically, there is no explanation for that. You play your hunches, I'll play mine. I say there's just one. And I say there's at least a hundred. The possible genesis of a new species. What a story. What a breakthrough. Now, how do we catch one? Oh, Richard, he moves so fast, he's probably in Aurelia by now. Not necessarily. You saw him yourself, what, 18 hours ago? But he shuns publicity. The rescue's over. Why would he stick around? <sighs> What's the longest they've been known to remain in one place? Average, 6 to 36 hours after each event. 36 hours. OK, retrieve something for us on an extended sighting. Minnesota, 1982. Canine was sighted by the Department of Lands and Forests. These were taken by rangers doing a survey on wolf migration. The dog appeared and took a transmitting device they were about to attach to a wolf's collar. They followed the signal from the air. The dog led them to a homestead where both her husband and wife were in need of medical attention. How long did he stick around in that instance? Almost a week. When the rangers returned the couple to their cabin, the dog was still present, apparently waiting for them. They were interested enough by his behavior to make these tapes, but as soon as they started shooting, the dog disappeared, and that was the last they saw of him. A week in one place. Why? He wanted to make sure they were all right. Exactly. Trish, call the hospital. See if the kid's still there. See if security's noticed a dog hanging around outside. <sighs> okay. Hello, yes. Response. Do you have a squad calm there? To Sorry. crime. He was. And have you noticed German Shepherd hanging around? Pursuit. That's it. I wonder. Yes, the boy was admitted to hospital for observation, but nobody's seen the dog. Trish, do you have a wig? Doesn't seem right fooling in this way. He may recognize you from this morning. How do you know he's going to follow you? It's a reflex, like Pavlov's dogs. Super canines see crime or danger and they give chase. They can't help themselves. He can't help himself. Whatever. Come on, let's go. your enemies. We're friends. We know all about you. We want to learn more about you. Don't be nervous. We won't detain you for long. We know that you're a super canine, a very special dog. But we're special friends.
we've got him. I couldn't have stopped him. It was as if, oh, I know this sounds crazy, as if he had some sort of hold on me. Oh, thank you. Well, I certainly prefer you to one of his brontosauruses. He's here. all your ropes and nets. On the contrary, Madeline, that metacanine, that dog, wants to be caught. He just doesn't know he wants to be caught. He has an urge to communicate with me. Do you suppose that you could have got your hypothesis backwards? What do you mean? Maybe the metacanine doesn't want to be discovered and revealed to the world. That he's after the Genesis tapes? <laughs> There's a voice that keeps on calling me Down the road, that's where I'll always be Every stop I make, I make a new friend Can't stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again Maybe tomorrow I'll want to settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on Until tomorrow the whole world is my home Thank you.